video, we are going to be exploring the Hungarian algorithm. The Hungarian algorithm is used when we are working with allocation problems, such as this one here, whereby we have multiple people that can complete multiple tasks. However, we want to make sure that this task is completed in a way that it has minimal cost or minimal time taken to complete. So if we're looking at this example here up on the board, we can see that we have four people that can complete four different tasks. The first part of the Hungarian algorithm is representing this in a matrix form, which we already have here. Now we're going to follow a few steps in order to be able to take this matrix and turn it into a completed allocation. So the first step that we're going to complete is something called row reduction. This is where we are going to take the smallest value from each row and subtract it. So for row W, we would subtract three, row X, subtract three, row Y, subtract five, and row Z, subtract two. So this now gives us our new matrix after the row reduction has occurred. Our first row will now be three, zero, one, three. Our second row will be one, zero, two, two. Our third row will be zero, two, four, one. And our fourth row will be one, zero, one, zero. Now, one way to check that you've completed the row reduction correctly is to make sure that you have at least one zero present in each row of your resultant matrix. Our second step that we're going to follow is column reduction. Similar to row reduction, we're going to take the smallest value from each column and subtract it. Now, because we've already completed row reduction, there will be some zeros already present in our columns. If that is the case, we just subtract zero. We need to make sure that we never end up with any negative values in our matrix when we are completing the Hungarian algorithm. So in this instance, our third column, we will be subtracting one. So let's write in our new matrix. Our first column hasn't changed. Second column hasn't changed. Our third column is now zero, one, three, zero, and our fourth column also remains the same. Okay. Now that we've completed the row reduction and the column reduction, our third step is we are going to cover all zeros. Now we are going to cover all the zeros using the minimum number of straight lines. And I always like starting off by seeing where's a line that I can position either vertically or horizontally to cover as many zeros as I can. So I'm going to start off by putting a line in my second column. I'm going to put another line in my fourth row. And I can see I've got two zeros left here. Now there's a few different ways that we can cover them, either with vertical or horizontal lines, but it doesn't matter what the orientation of these lines are. We're just focused on the minimum number of lines. So I'm going to put one in my first row and one in my first column. Now we can see that we have ended up with four lines. And in this particular allocation problem, we have four jobs. Now when our number of lines equal our number of jobs, that means we can go ahead and start allocating the jobs. This brings us to our last step, whereby we are going to allocate using the zeros. Okay. So we are going to start by putting together a bipartite graph. Now with our bipartite graph, we are going to have the four people on our left hand side and our four jobs on the right hand side. 
W, X, Y, and Z. Now the way we complete this bipartite graph is that each zero indicates to us a job that can be completed. Now I have taken the final allocated matrix that we had originally drawn lines over and just redrawn it without those lines and with our column and row headings back in there to help us with this allocation. So we are looking at every single zero that is present within this matrix. So if we have a look at our first row of job W, this is telling us that job W can be done by person L and person M. So here in our bipartite graph, I'm gonna take job W, I'm gonna draw a line from W to L and a line from W to M. I'm then gonna repeat this process with my remaining three jobs. So job X, I can see can be completed by person L. Job Y can be completed by person K. And then finally, job Z can be completed by person L, M, or N. So now we have our completed bipartite graph. When we're looking for the final allocations of the job and the people, I highly recommend starting off by seeing if we have any vertices on each side of the graph that only has one edge coming off it. One example would be person K and job Y. We can see that there is only one edge leading um, between those two. So we can say, Therefore, K must be done, or person K, I should say, must do job Y. I can then also see on my right hand side that job X can only be done, or I should say, yes, job X can only be done by person L, but I'll put that the other way around for consistency. And I can also see down the bottom that person N can only do job Z. We can then see by process of elimination that the only person left is person M and the only job left is job W. And that is how we complete our allocation problems using the Hungarian algorithm. Okay, so chances are you've gone and attempted a few Hungarian algorithm based questions and some have probably worked out really nicely like that example we just covered. There's also a chance that by now you've come across a few whereby you've gone to allocate based off your zeros, but you've noticed that the number of lines that you use to cover your zeros don't match the number of jobs you have. We're gonna have a look at this example here to see what we can do in those situations. So again, we're going to start off by step one, completing our row reduction by subtracting the smallest value from each of our rows. So we are going to end up with eight, zero, 17, 40, 0, 7, 12, 24, 0, 16, 22, and 49. And then finally, 6, 0, 28, and 39. And again, we are going to complete our column subtraction, where our column 1 and column 2 values are going to stay the same. Column 3, we're going to subtract 12 from each of these. And column 4, we're going to subtract 24 from each of these values. Okay. Now that we've completed this reduction, we are going to attempt to cover all zeros using the minimum number of straight lines. So thinking of the lines that could be the best bang for our buck, I'm going to put one in our second row to get three zeros. I'm going to put one in our second column to get two zeros. And I can see I only have one zero left. So what I've ended up with here is 
three lines, but four jobs. Okay, that's not going to work out for us at this stage with our allocation. So we have this extra step that we can complete here after covering the zeros to help us rejig the matrix we've got to work with so that we actually have the same number of lines as what we do jobs. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to take the minimum uncovered value. So I can see I have six numbers here in my matrix that are still uncovered. And the smallest value of that is five. So in my new matrix, I am going to take the number five and add that to my intersection numbers. So here and here are my intersections. So zero plus five will become five and seven plus five will become 12. The next thing I'm going to do is subtract the minimum uncovered number, which is five, from all of the uncovered numbers. So five take five will be zero, 16 take five will be 11, 10 take five, 25 take five, 16 take five, and 15 take five. Now for all of our values that were already covered by one single line, they're going to remain the same value. So we can finish off our new matrix by putting in those final values. So you can see we've ended up now with a new zero in a different location in the matrix. So we're going to see if following this process is going to help us with our line allocation. So let's have a go. I can see in my first row and second row, I have two zeros, so I'm going to cross those off first. And I'm left here with a zero in my first column and a zero in my second column. Now, regardless of whether I place these lines vertically or horizontally, I'm going to have to use two lines to cover these zeros. So now we have four lines and four jobs, which is excellent for us because we can now go ahead and complete our allocation via zeros. I am just going to rewrite this matrix. Okay, so I've gone and redrawn our matrix that we've covered the zeros with underneath and put back in our Coleman row headings. This is going to help us for our allocation. So we're going to start creating a bipartite graph. So I'm going to put person A, B, C, D down the left hand side and jobs M, P, C, B down the right hand side. Now again, we're looking for the zeros to tell us which people can complete which tasks. So if I'm looking across at person A, I can see that they are capable of completing job P and job C. So I'm going to put those edges into the bipartite graph. Now looking at person B, I can see that they can do jobs C and B. Person C can only do job M. And then finally, person D can only do job P. So again, when we're completing the allocations, we want to have a look at, are there any vertices where there is only one edge connecting them? So straight away, I can see that person C must do job M. I can see that person D must do job P. And I can see that person B must do job B. And that leaves person A doing job C. So by incorporating these Hungarian algorithm steps into any allocation problem you have, you will be able to successfully find the exact job pairings for each person to ensure that the total cost or the total time taken for this project is kept to a minimum. Happy solving with the Hungarian algorithm. Let me know in the comments below how you went applying this or if there's any topics you'd like to see covered.